Because I'm still a little dark on this side, am I? Not? Yeah, you are. In fact, is we might be able to can it down a little bit now that uh, we don't have to worry about glare. Ah! ah! Oh, that works! <laughs> can you see me now? <laughs> Hello out there, I'm the Oldest Nerd, and on today's video, uh, first of all, we've been uh, making some adjustments to the set and trying to get the lights right, so uh, we're continuing to tweak on this. We hope that that uh, uh, eventually settles down, but it's the one thing you have to deal with whenever you uh, change your backdrop uh, of your set, in which uh, you never know exactly what you're going to get and how the camera is going to react to it, so we're working with it. But today we're going to be talking about a couple of shows that we recommend to you. Uh, one is The Expanse. The Expanse is a science fiction program that is perhaps the best science fiction program on television. And we say that because of very believable characters, very believable situations, uh, a very good projection into the future. We're not going to utopia. We're not going to anything that's greatly different, societally speaking, from what we have right now. Uh, the main parties, if you haven't read the books or seen the previous seasons of the show, have the United Nations basically over Earth and what's called the Mars Constitutional Republic over the colonized Mars. Uh, we take it about a hundred years since the time that Mars was first settled and uh, very much like the United States from England became its own country or its own civilization, shall we say. And in the meantime, uh, there have been people who live in the asteroid belt, which they just call the belt on various asteroids and space stations and things that are there. Uh, the belt has uh, a place where uh, a lot of the water is harvested for use on Mars mostly and for other resources that are used on Earth mostly. So the asteroid belt, while it is filled with working class people making working class wages, is actually the supplier for most of the needs for Earth and for Mars and have often remained neutral in times when Earth and Mars have been adversarial to each other. And that comes to the situation that we find season three uh, after uh, teaming together to get rid of a proto-molecule that was uh, causing uh, uh, terrible things to happen to people. Uh, that's been disposed of, and now uh, there are other things that are going on that uh, uh, one side or the other believes that the other side has kept part of the proto-molecule, and uh, it causes uh, Earth and Mars to go to battle for each other. In the meantime, one of the instigators of all of the trouble, her name is uh, Christian, uh, has uh, been fleeing the United Nations and uh, uh, in a ship that was commandeered by a former Martian Marine. And uh, they find themselves in a situation where they're being shot at and they put out a distress call. The only thing that they've got is to signal Mars, and Mars isn't answering, but the Rocinante, which is our hero's ship, does receive it, and uh, that's where the plot begins. We won't go into too much detail here, but uh, as usual, there is politics, there is human nature, there is the desire for self-preservation as well as to do the right thing, and the conflict that comes between those things, plus the interaction between people who don't exactly like each other but work together for some common uh, use. So uh, we find this uh, a most interesting program, The Expanse. If you've not seen it, uh, you don't really have to go all the way back to season one. Uh, at the beginning of season three, they pretty much explain to you what you need to know about uh, what's going on. It won't take long to learn who the characters are. Now that's uh, one show, and that's on Amazon Prime, and uh, that's in season three. And there's a brand new show called The Boys, which also is on Amazon Prime, and uh, we have found out through an article we read in Forbes that it is the highest rated uh, science fiction fantasy program uh, that um, is going on now. 
And in fact, uh, it's the highest rated program that's ever been released as an original series on Amazon. And uh, it beats out uh, everything except for the Batman animated series as far as ratings. Uh, it is uh, beyond uh, Daredevil, The Punisher, Legion, Titans, Jessica Jones, uh, Doom Patrol, The Umbrella Academy, The Flash, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., um, Legends of Tomorrow. Uh, all of these shows have lower ratings than uh, what this new show has, The Boys. Now, what is The Boys about? It is a superhero show. Think of it as The Avengers, but without uh, all of the nobility to it. Uh, these are superheroes uh, in a world where superheroes exist. There are hundreds of them. Most of them work for a company that uh, causes their um, exploits and heroicisms to be publicized and for them to become kind of celebrities. And many of these superheroes get caught up in the celebrity of being a superhero. And... The cream of the crop is what's called the Seven. And the Seven uh, consist of the leader, whose name is Homelander, who is kind of a cross between Superman and Captain America. Uh, he seems to be the most truly heroic of all of them until you look a little closer and find out that he's kind of a psycho. Uh, then uh, you have uh, Deep, which is a character who is kind of like Aquaman, but has uh, some problems of uh, his own usability because all his superpower really is, is to be able to breathe underwater to talk to fish. And uh, in most cases, that doesn't seem to help solve any crimes. Then uh, there's Translucent, who is an invisible man only when his clothes are off and uh, with the same kind of idea in mind of anybody that might do if they were invisible, uh, he finds himself in places that he shouldn't be. Also, uh, a Flash clone, uh, A-Train, who is concerned that there may be somebody faster than him, and uh, then um, Queen Maeve, who is similar to Wonder Woman. Introducing in the first episode is a new superhero who has been doing things in her local community and has been picked for the Sevens. Very excited about it. Her one thing that she wants to do is to save the world and have the opportunity to do so by being part of the Seven and is taken down a peg when she joins, when she first encounters uh, the organization that is around the Seven. It's not exactly what she expected, and, and these superheroes are not exactly as altruistic as she at first thought. And so uh, we get a look through her eyes as to what's happening to uh, uh, this whole superhero worship kind of thing that was going on in the society. Now, on the other side, uh, we have some people who were injured by acts of these heroes, either intentional or accidental or negligently, and uh, they are led by um, Butcher, uh, played by Carl Urban, who was uh, most recently Dr. McCoy in the reboot Star Trek picture, and uh, he actually is... Uh, probably the best reason to watch this show, just uh, to see him in a thick Australian accent. Then um, uh, Jack Quaid, who is the son of Dennis Quaid and Meg Ryan, uh, is Huey, who is a clerk in an electronics store who uh, becomes convenient to Butcher and uh, is encouraged to join his ranks. Now, uh, Butcher is a former CIA agent, we think, uh, or a current CIA agent, we think. And uh, he has kind of a personal vendetta uh, against Homelander. Then there is Simon Pegg, 
who plays another part in this, but uh, you, if you don't look just right, you might not even recognize him. That's uh, uh, an amazing portrayal that he does in a fairly bit part, at least in the uh, episodes that I've seen so far. But uh, Star Trek, um, at least reboot, is represented with actors in this. To kind of sum up what the show is about, think of the Avengers if they were all like Deadpool, except that it's raunchier, has more sex in it, and has more cynicism in it. It doesn't mean that it's bad, uh, but it does mean that you better be ready that this is not your usual kind of superhero show and that what happens here is not always good by the good guys and what happens is not always bad by the bad guys. I'd like to know if you're interested in watching that. If you have Amazon Prime, I recommend it. And uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments. And also, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell uh, to let you know when the next video by us is coming out. And until next time, when we'll continue to adjust our set here, don't go far.